Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Dr. Aaron Goodman, I'm uh, one of the cell therapists and bone marrow transplanters at the University of California, San Diego Morris Cancer Center. And I'm going to talk about uh, um, CAR T cell therapy for diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Okay, and this is a new uh, promising therapy with uh, FDA approvals that is available uh, just about everywhere now in most states. So CAR T cells, these are chimeric antigen receptor T cells. And that's a mouthful. Okay. So I'm going to try to, to break this up. This is something that's confusing even for physicians. So uh, let's try to see if we can, we can get this straight. So I'm going to talk about the main indication. Uh, and this is for patients with diffuse large B cell lymphoma uh, that have relapsed disease. Okay. So a diffuse large B cell lymphoma uh, is an aggressive uh, B cell lymphoma. Uh, most patients uh, are treated with upfront chemotherapy. Uh, usually combined with an antibody called rituximab. So the typical frontline therapy is what we call RCHOP, okay? And in roughly 60 to maybe upwards to 80% of patients, uh, they get six cycles, uh, so a cycle every three weeks, and that results in durable remissions and cures in roughly 60 to 80% of patients, uh, depending on which data set you look at. And um, for those where the, the therapy is not successful, it doesn't work, uh, the next standard treatment would be more chemotherapy, uh, um, usually something different than what they got because the first therapy was not effective. And if they respond to that second line therapy, they would then go on to an autologous stem cell transplantation. Okay. And the autologous stem cell transplantation, this is a, a procedure where we take a patient um, and we give them medicines. Uh, 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 one's called GCSF. The other one's called Mozabil. And this makes all the stem cells that sit in their bone marrow. So normally the stem cells live in the bone marrow. It makes them go into the bloodstream. We then hook the patient up to, it's kind of like a dialysis machine, but it's called apheresis where we can filter off the stem cells. We then take the stem cells and we put them in the freezer. Okay. Now we take the patient and give them high, very high dose chemotherapy, such a high dose that hopefully we kill the lymphoma. But the problem is with such a high dose of chemotherapy, the bone marrow, all the stem cells in the bone marrow won't repopulate and blood production would cease. So that would be a bad thing to do. But fortunately, we've already collected the stem cells. They're in the freezer. And then we reinfuse them into the patient. And with that approach, we can cure uh, an aggressive lymphoma that was refractory to frontline treatment in approximately 30 to 50% of patients. Okay. However, that still leaves us with a subgroup of patients, maybe 10 to 20% of all newly diagnosed patients where the stem cell transplantation and the frontline therapy did not work. Um, prior to the advent of CAR T cells, this group of patients, uh, therapy was largely supportive care or palliative treatments that weren't designed to cure the lymphoma. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate, and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.